going on YouTube. All right, so the premise of kind of what I'm gonna do is like the day in the life of what I kind of do. And uh, I'm a very busy working professional. So winter time, I really focus heavily on, on kind of work and, and getting myself squared away so that I can enjoy summer, um, which means spring comes around and a lot of planning <laughs> is under way here. So first things first, you can see, I kind of got things cleaned up in here. Um, this is always kind of the crap pile. I'm working on getting that consolidated in the next few weeks. But first and foremost, today's task. So tomorrow, excuse me, next week, I have the Evo going in for performance mods. I have the Mustang going in for a blower. I have that going in for a blower, which is my track hawk. Um, so I'm gonna get everything ready. And I hate doing things last minute because when you rush, things get beat up. I mean, when you're operating a big truck and a big trailer, you gotta take your time. So I'll just do a little bit every day. So this trailer here has to get connected to my truck at some point. So that's what my goal is. You'll see I got this all cleaned off the other day. I'd say we're entering spring, but we're expecting another foot of snow this Saturday, excuse me. So today's task, get the truck connected up here to this guy. And then I'm gonna try and swing it this way and then back up to the door, or at least to right here so I can effortlessly load these vehicles on into it. Um, I gotta clean it out a little bit. So that's the plan for right now. I think what I might do is set up a tripod over here and just put it on time-lapse so you guys can watch how long this takes. It's exhausting. Hey, I know you guys. Um, so yeah, let me, uh, let me get this all squared away. First things first, let's get the uh, F350 run in here. Got new steer tires on it the other day and new alignment. So let me just press this, press this, press this. Where's the button? Here we go. Look at that. Love it. Still the cleanest 2018 you'll ever find. All right, I'll get this squared away now. Okay, okay. Uh, I record it on a tripod, me connecting it, but I won't post that footage because it's embarrassing, even for me. <laughs> it took way too long. But just to show you guys what we were up against, I had to move some snow. I think she's pretty solidified to the ground here. Now I gotta come out, I gotta watch my trailer swing because as I come out and make this corner, that end there is gonna go into the rocks. Um, for anybody that's pulled fifth wheels before, especially long ones, it's a bit of a finicky dance. I've pulled this all across the country, no issues. But you see what I mean here? So I'm gonna try and position it over a little bit. It might take a little finagling. But I think we'll I think we'll be able to get her. Alright, let's give her a go. Okay, alright, we made some progress. Uh, I love this cover. It seems to take a beating. You can see here it's kinda taking a bit of a beating, uh, it'll come right back. Um, so I should have taken that off, but hindsight's 2020. Ford had no issues yanking this thing out. So we're uh, we're about through the worst of it here. Look at that fat booty. So we'll see if I can get it up this way and then I'll attempt to, to back her up. I usually have much more space in this guys, but with the amount of snowfall that we had, I've got a lot of granite sitting over here. Usually I would just pull straight out, turn around over there and come back. I mean, I designed this house to be efficient and uh, right now it's not, but that's fine. And then obviously need to clean in here and then we need to clean in here too. There's a lot going on in here that needs to be taken care of before I jam a bunch of cars in here. I don't want anything falling on them. And then that light's on, let's turn that off. Okay, onward. Wish me luck. Currently taking a leak, but I'm moving my big trailer 
But my issue is, is the trailer's starting to hit the snowbank. I don't want to damage it, so I've got to get creative here. I think maybe I come back it up and go a little bit wider up this bank to give me my swinging room. Here's the problem with this time of year is there's no fucking space to do anything. All right, my dude, sorry for uh, skipping ahead here. Sometimes I'm just like just get in my zone, you know? Um, I'm just kind of getting this thing all configured. Uh, geez, I gotta sweep it out. Um, one thing I'll say about, I mean, any trailer nowadays, they're all trash, whether it's an RV or, or a, a utility trailer like this is, I will go down this wall four or five times a year. Like you see it up there, it's already popping out. The amount of screws, and they're all self tappers, that remove themselves, like this guy here. If you don't do it, you'll drive over them. And no joke, you'll get a flat tire. It's happened multiple times. So I do a walk and a full clean anytime I'm about to use my trailer. Kind of, it's a little bit ridiculous. I know it is. Um, you know, I'm not easy on my stuff, but I do take, do take care of it. Uh, you know what's cool? Well, it's not really cool, but you see all these this black in here? I washed these walls before I left for Florida, but that's soot from my truck. You'll see it up here as well. It's crazy, but these are not airtight. I mean, water's getting in here and I gotta figure that out next, which is not ideal. I suspect it was getting in the top of the door there. Um, just because I did see a little bit of separation down here kind of and so you know i'll get that figured out i think that seal might be blown in just a quick seal replacement that's what i hope at the very least um, but we'll get this all dried up and then i'll give it a nice oil spray but otherwise we got ourselves in a good situation here excuse the sniffles it is a little bit cold out it's about two degrees um like I said, I gotta sweep it out and uh, move that metal out of here and we're ready for some cars. God, I love this feeling. You know, spring is, it's not in the air, but it's coming. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the March, April change over here, uh, the longer days and just the smell of, of unburnt gas. Um, never been a fan of Mustangs, uh, just being honest, but you know, you can't, can't give that coyote motor any less respect than it deserves because it's a it's a hell of a power plant and this thing here is going to be insane when we're done with it i think uh i'm gonna have to go with a water rim and tire combo but i'm pretty pumped about this i'm going to go inside get the uh keys and then i'm gonna do my best to load it up here i'm gonna get steph to watch me we'll get it inside it looks almost like it won't fit but i fit giant side by sides in there so I'm sure a car trailer is made for cars will fit nicely. I'll be honest, I've only had a few cars in this trailer and they're all about the size of the Evo, not these big, uh, big girls here. So anyways, I will try and film that. Let me grab some keys. Okay, I know I didn't film it. I'm really bad at this. It's just me, right? So I'm trying to be extra, extra careful pulling these vehicles in here, but I had to boost the Mustang. Everything's dead. <laughs> Typical spring problems. I'm also in my best attire here. But the good news is, is we've got everything in here. The track hawk is actually significantly wider than the Mustang. So I have to go in through the trunk. Kind of sucks. This trailer was never really made for this application. Otherwise, I would have got the little cutout doors on the sides. But it's in and it's safe. So now I'll work on getting these guys strapped down. And then, yeah, off they go to Sinister Performance for some Gen 5 Whipples. What do you think, D? Hey, Dirks, do we like Gen 5 Whipples? We do. This guy should be making about a 1,000 on E85 to the wheels. Um, the Mustang, I mean, the world's your oyster, right? It's a tranny parts that really can't keep up with the Coyote, but we're going to keep them around 500 to 700 wheel. Give them a couple uh, couple options. But yeah, they fit in here. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I might have another maybe eight feet in here, seven feet. I'm sure if I snug them up, I could get them pretty close. But, you know, I want enough distance in here. If a strap breaks, you know, they're not going to touch anything. And I think I've accomplished that. So, at any rate, I will come back to you once I get her all strapped in. 
Okay, so this is all in a week, guys. You'll see my trailer is just outside here. Uh, that is going to Sinister Performance tomorrow. But, you know, kind of letting you guys in the, the day in the life of, of King Boss Quad here. So I'm getting the arms for this this week. They got to go in for powder. But I just had a, a good buddy of mine who builds competitive off-road Jeeps come by yesterday. Steve Taylor, D3 Fabrication. And we're going to replace all the Himes on this with lifetime replaceable and lockable Himes. And, you know, he was explaining a lot of really cool things to me that make sense. So this is a shear bolt and it sheared right at the threads. And my fundamental understanding from what he's told me, and let me see if I can find, is you see a joint like this? You see, um, this is another example of it here. What you want is you want your shank to come all the way through and your threads to start just here. What's happening is they use the wrong bolts here. And so you're actually getting threads here. So it's actually hollowing itself out because the shank is larger than the threads. And so unfortunately we need to upgrade a lot of the hardware on this. If a bolt fits, doesn't mean it's the right bolt. And so all the Himes are being ripped out of this thing. We're gonna go with the better Heim system. And then ultimately we're gonna go over this whole thing and just bulletproof it. Um, you know, same with these guys here. See where the threads are? That's the wrong bolt for that. So if I push it over, you can see here that that is much better, but unfortunately it can't sit like that because they both have to snug up. So one of them is gonna hollow out. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody, but here nor there, we got our tire delivery yesterday. Uh, I forget how much beefier a 40, excuse me, a 45 is than a 42. So yes, I have 10 45s. It's, uh, it's definitely a, a beefier tire in every respect. Um, we're gonna go over this completely. I'm pulling all the arms off of it, all new bushings. I do it every year, um, set the toe, do the alignment, all that fun stuff, put the right bolts in it. Then we're gonna attack the audio on this. Um, we're gonna get that sub in. Uh, sorry, a larger sub, bigger, a couple more amps, and uh, just generally give this thing a bit of a, a makeover. Um, my favorite machine uh, in terms of, you know, going out to, uh, you know, like my nationals and, and partying for the night. Absolutely love this machine. So I'm just, I'm just making it cooler. That's kind of it. So we'll continue the progress of the day in the week of, uh, of King Boss Quad here. Um, I'm going to get these tires on this week. Uh, I'm going to get that cleaned up over there and uh, maybe I'll take the tracks off the Renegade. Always something, but at any rate, uh, just kind of letting you guys know what this looks like. Um, there's gonna be a whole mismatch of videos that I put together here, so um, just try and keep up, guys. Appreciate you. All right, both cars drop off at Sinister's. Uh, one of these is not like the other. Actually, a few of them are. <laughs> there's actually more other brands and there are Jeeps right now. Uh, but anyways, uh, this should be uh, fun. Let's fast forward a month and... Jesus, Mike. Wow. Uh, fast forward a month and they should be making double the power they are now. And uh, I didn't film myself coming down, but pretty effortless in the rig here. Um, can't complain. Got everything in, got everything out on skate, everything you know, stayed where it was supposed to during the run here. Again, all highway, so I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna complain at all. Love this rig though, a beautiful night. All right, home we go. This is like the longest running YouTube video ever. I keep doing things and coming back and showing you guys, but I think this is the best way to do it. Uh, so this weekend, I wouldn't say we finished the six by six, but uh, we definitely got it to a state where I can now move it around the shop. It's no longer on jack stands. Uh, so for those that are wondering, we had the 42s, we moved to the 45s. Um, this is definitely the biggest tire I can fit on this, but I mean, it's bloody massive. All right, it measures it to be 102 inches exactly in width, uh, which is the legal limit on a road. Uh, that officially does make it wider than a Hummer H1. I believe they're 100 inches. Uh, could be wrong, don't hold me to it, but um, kind of made a list of things that need to be done on this. Uh, one of the cool things that we added was a pinion brake. Kind of see that in there. So uh, for those that have no idea what a pinion brake is, typically you've got your, um, your pads, your rotors, and your calipers out here. 
but because we had so much rotational mass, uh, we had to kind of reduce that rotational mass by putting a pinion brake on, and effectively it creates a much smoother, uh, much more abrupt stopping experience. Because uh, what was happening is you'd be doing about 100 kilometers an hour. Yes, this will do over 100 kilometers an hour. Down the road, you'd hit the brakes and you would just cook right through them, and rightfully so, right? These are, these, these, this brake up, brake setup was never really truly designed for, for what we've done. So uh, safety first, had to do that. Um, so that's great. Uh, what's really cool about this is now uh, I'm ready to tackle the front end. Um, so this is going to be pretty much all refreshed. Uh, you know, I don't bog with this thing um, as much as I'd like, but I just like having my stuff mint, you know? Um, and then we're adding the uh, amp and possibly some subs in here in the next little bit. Oh yeah, I did manage to clean this out. Excuse me, I got the hiccups this morning. I did manage to clean this out, so uh, yeah. Gotta keep the batteries charged, always. Um, in fact, I'm so anally retentive. I keep another set just kicking around just in case because those ones go under the deck over there. So yeah, just getting uh, getting everything ready for spring. Uh, Megatron's parts should be here this week, if not next week. I'm gonna reach out to PATV and Turner today and see what's going on. But on the docket this week, I'm gonna get this one all cleaned up, maintenanced, so oil change. Uh, I'm gonna actually put a new belt on it as well. The belt took a little bit of heat in Florida. Definitely needs one. Oh look, that's where that went, I need that. Um, Get the snowmobiles up and put away. Uh, spring has arrived. You can see by the sunshine coming through here. It is quite early in the morning. Gotta love that. And that is all. Um, maybe get the tracks off of uh, the Renegade here. But otherwise, uh, that is the latest and greatest update. Uh, you'll come back and you'll probably see, oh, maybe the Trackhawk and the Mustang will be back. I think we're gonna do a series on the dyno. Um, I'm going to include it in this video upload as well. So we'll put the dyno vids together for that, maybe a week or two away. And outside of that, I just got to get this guy together. That's it. All right. Thanks for logging in here, guys. Hey, guys. All right. This is the longest sequence for YouTube videos ever. I started that last clip that you saw just moments ago in april we are now end of august well middle of august there are so many updates for you guys here i'm going to go through as many as possible uh we've got clips of this on the dyno absolutely ripping the evo's nearly done uh well, well look at that for right now uh this is completely redone this is completely redone so let's go through as many things as possible here today i think the first real update you guys always ask how is the house coming along? Well, let me show you real quick. Holy shit, we have a pond, guys. Look at this. We are really in the final stages of construction. If you look back on this video, this was all a bunch of granite laying there. We had big banks everywhere. The ground is flattened, and we have a nice half-acre pond here with two fountains and a beautiful, beautiful granite rock wall on the back. Gotta love Muskoka's landscape here. Um, the reason for the pond is for fire. Um, so that's a hydrant here. We're just gonna finish that up in the next few days and paint it red so the dogs can pee all over it. Right, Alfred, is this the Lake Elf? Yes, as we call this Lake Elf. He's in it every day. Still a little bit of cleanup here. Uh, never seems to end, unfortunately. Um, we are, we have made the decision to uh, finish the landscaping next year. Uh, when I started this video, uh, Never told anybody, but Steph is pregnant and we are expecting in one month today, a uh, baby girl. Her name is gonna be Stella Mary Fernet and we couldn't be more excited to be parents. Uh, so that's kind of put a wrench in the play, uh, but we've made some pretty good progress this summer. We also bought a new boat. We've got some new machines coming. So I apologize for taking some time off uh, from social media, more particularly YouTube here. Uh, it's been, just a wild time to build a house, have a baby, and uh, and all that fun stuff. But I'll walk right around this side of the house here for you guys. I'm out of breath. Talking and walking is difficult. I don't know how I used to do it. Do, do, do. Oh, we put in an invisible fence. I just got to get that buried here. Um, but this side is relatively done. Shout out to uh, 
my boys at Lloyd's Landscaping. Uh, hot tub is in, it's plumbed. These have been moved from up there where they got ripped off the wall this winter. They are now relocated down here. I've got to reskin that, but the pad is in. We just need some granite tops over here, new barbecue. Uh, we've got a fireplace and outdoor patio set happening over here. And then, as I mentioned, tons of grass, uh, a little bit of spill over here. That's going to be oh, good grief. That watch is a nightmare. So water's been taken care of. We had some water issues over here. You can see that we've got uh, a ton of drainage. Still a lot of cleanup, guys. Uh, it never really ends. Uh, I did host one ride this year. I've just been so busy, it's been quite hard to do. Uh, right now, the big black trailer is for sale. Uh, I'm selling it for 55,000 Canadian. Uh, I just, nothing I have fits in it any longer. So that is why. Uh, no real updates on this machine other than Taylor decided to send it off the moon and break a radius rod. Um, I knew I was gonna have to change this design. When I bought this kit from PATV, I was told that it was gonna be the dual rods and that piece was gonna be changed. That is the weakest link. I don't know why Canem ever did that. It is the stupidest, excuse my watch again. It is the stupidest design ever. So this is going to my buddy Steve over at D3 Fab. He's gonna redo this whole back end for us in the next week or so. And we're gonna clean this machine up, maybe some new plastics, uh, but it works well. It's probably the best working machine we have. Pivoting over to Megatron. Look, you guys down south, you don't have the same terrain we have here. I'll be real transparent. Canada is a much worse terrain than anywhere I've ridden in the States, um, more particularly down south. Like West Virginia is pretty bad. But we've dropped this machine six to eight inches. And the reason for that, you can see the axle straps. They've got actual play in them. Suspension actually works. We have taken all those really shit heim joints out and replaced them with TMR lifetime greasable lockable heims. I'm not getting any more of this pivoting in the back or front end. I can legitimately trail this machine, whereas before you'd be bouncing, it'd be grinding. These things would be pivoting and grinding against each other. No knock to PATV, right? They build a bounty machine. That's what they delivered. Um, I wanted something that was a bit more of a hybrid. So um, now I have one. I can legitimately drive this down the road and it's got suspension, it absorbs bumps, it works perfectly. Now we did all of that work, Steve and I, and one thing I forgot to do was put the winch back together. So probably screwed that winch, it's okay. I've got multiple ones. I'm gonna just take this watch off. What a piece of garbage that is, look. Get out of here. So at any rate, this one is done. There's nothing else to do in there besides the winch. I'm gonna put uh, one of those new warns in there. It was the original plan all the time. Uh, you can look at Mark Freeman's videos. You can see that I did ride this. This thing does get right ridden. Scratches all over the rims. Ooh, whatever. That is life. That is life. Uh, at any rate, the most exciting update is honestly my favorite machine. We've no one calling it the 6x6 because I have one of those. Some updates on that too. This is, we're just gonna call it the 10 by 10 at this point. Every time I say six by six, my wife is like, which, which one? Um, 10 by 10, so here we go. Uh, winch is gone, it was a useless winch anyways, more for show, it did work, but it was gonna pull the deck off. I think it was like a 15 or 20,000 pounder, so pretty substantial. Um, we have gone with two 15 inch subs in here. We have now 12 wake towers circling the entire thing. Uh, we have put upgraded TCP brass bushings in here. No more bushing issues. If you have a look in here, we've got some pretty cool stuff going on. Beautiful fin trail stuff. New speakers up here, sub down here. I think we've got four amps on this. We've got a total of four batteries. Uh, huge, absolutely huge shout out to these guys here. They did all of the audio on this thing. And let me tell you, they have done a superb job. Them coupled with D3 Fab, they got this thing completely aligned. It's working right. The right hardware is in here. Guys, I cannot stress this enough. Just because a nut and bolt fits doesn't mean it's the right nut and bolt. So you can see we got witness marks on everything now to see if it's spinning. We've got the right shank size, the right thread and we've got Stover nuts, which means none of this stuff is gonna back off. Uh, obviously, defenders are notorious for that and they hollow out the insides. No longer my issue, we re-welded new tabs on it. 
So, hell yeah, brother. Look at this thing. Absolutely infatuated with this machine. And I'm not gonna say it just yet. I'm gonna wait until I park it next to J-Balls, but I do feel like we could potentially give him a good run for his money. Shout out to J-Ball for motivating me to, uh, to do some sound. If you guys have ever seen his machine, it is really a work of art and the guy is a total beauty. And uh, he made a post one time, he says, you know, there is no jealousy, it's only motivation. And that's true. I am not jealous of anybody, I'm just motivated by them. And uh, he's the same as I am. So J-Ball, great dude. Thank you very much for giving me all the guidance and support as we go through this and hopefully I can stand next to you with a cool machine and maybe hear my own speakers for once. <laughs> uh, again, nothing's ever done, right? Um, I still got to uh, dyno mat the bottom side of this. It vibrates like crazy, absolute insanity. Um, so we'll get that done over the winter, no big deal. Uh, we're also canceling our subscription to Turner Eagle or Turner Axles. Um, I've had nothing but poor, poor luck. And I'll give you guys an example. This is a brand new axle stock angle leaking boot i don't know what they did about two years ago they decided to have chinese boots introduced but they're trash axles are great but if you got a leaky boot they're trash so we're gonna move over to cobra but first before we do that we're gonna try some rcv axles apparently it's what all the uh, cool kids use so we're gonna take all of this apart all of that apart and all of this apart and replace i don't even know how many axles that would be four eight plus six you know it's a ton of axle boots that we're gonna have to do um but yeah i mean daniel i gave you your shot man much love, brother. You've supported me over the last six, seven years, but unfortunately we are calling it a close. Uh, I cannot be replacing axle boots every single day. Um, so there you go. There you have it. Figure it out, Daniel. Maybe one day we can do business again. Um, just over here, this is currently for sale. I've not ridden it in about a year, right? It's a mint machine. I've spent tons of money on it. I love it, but we are replacing it with something a little more utilitarian for family. Um, this is a very selfish type of sport. You know, you can have one person on it, maybe one person on the back. It's not particularly safe. So we're going to go with a side-by-side -side with tracks. Um, enclosed cab, you kind of know where I'm going with this. Um, c are off at Toronto PwC, getting some upgrades. That new black RXP, what a machine. Makes the RXT really feel useless and not nimble. Uh, does about 80 miles an hour with just a tune. Uh, but that's nothing in comparison to my boat. Let's talk about the track hawk. I'm gonna post a video up of this right now on the dyno. Did the first run, it's really loud, and we're icing it down. I do a little bit of messing around to keep the thing in gear. We're at Steve's place here in Bracebridge. I'll tell you guys a story about this dyno later on. I've been on it since I was about 18. Sport Tech Performance. First run right here. 888, 820. And it was pretty hot too, so we're gonna give it some time here and some love. Waiting for another tune from uh, Sinister. We'll do good stuff and off we go. Pretty sick stuff, huh? 
Uh, really, really cool thing about this is I still tow with it. I tow my boat with it. I tow my sea dues with it. I pull trailers everywhere. This is the most functional ass kicking machine on the planet. And uh, I've got all new tires for it. You can see here we've got some ethanol we run on it. We've got some brand new drag radials here. Ignore my wetsuit. Right? Spared no expense. Very, 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 very happy with this. Sinister really knocked it out of the park. Um, little hint to you guys here. Uh, it's not on its kill tune. And if it was, it'd be pretty useless. Uh, so... We'll post up a couple videos of me racing an RS3 that makes a gob of power. Believe it or not, this comes around it on the big end. Uh, I would never have thought a fridge like this comes around something like that on the big end. But at any rate, it did. I'm happy about that. Obviously, the Plaid is still the most badass car on the planet. I don't care if you guys hate Teslas. you obviously never been in one before that's fast. Uh, a few updates to the gym. Got a few other pieces of equipment. No big deal. The house is different. Sorry, dude. No dogs allowed. All new flooring. Steph really picked a really good choice here. We still got to do some of the uh, shoe mold around the edge, but that is coming together. It really sets the house off. We're putting a wood-burning fireplace in here in a few weeks. Uh, trying to offset Trudeau's carbon tax with uh, propane costs. I'm going to be out of breath here real quick. Here you go, guys. No more bar. Cannot have a kid and a bar on the same floor. Obviously, we've also added a door here uh, to make sure that the sound doesn't travel because it echoes quite loudly in here. And that door that was over there uh, has been removed as well. So, uh, you know, overall pretty happy. The bar is not going away. It is being relocated to a really cool spot. You guys are going to love that. And uh, otherwise, I will post another video of the Evo. It's nearly done. Probably going to make somewhere around yeah, four, 400 and well, maybe five or more on, on pump. And then we'll do an E-tune on it as well. And it should... It should give the Trackhawk a really good run for its money. But otherwise, I'm going to the house a little bit dirty right now. We live in it, obviously. Uh, got all the cameras here, all the baby gifts. Thank you, everybody, who did that for us. Uh, we will open them soon, I promise. Uh, we're just uh, making sure the house gets done. So thanks for tuning in, and let's get to some uh, riding videos at the end of this. Cheers, guys. No problem. He's got fifties on and he's scared. I don't know what he's scared of. Off-road limousine, baby. Guys, OG Razor right here. Four inch boxes, 45 inch tires. It can be done. 
Easy work, baby, easy work. Yeah, probably. Oh, this guy's crazy. Yeah, I stepped in the wrong spot. Literally a foot, a foot over. <laughs> it's, it's boobies deep. <laughs> Just to look, I stepped off the bike over here. Boobies deep.